once our site is installed, there's one last thing we want to do before we begin using it. We want to go to our status report page, which is at reports and status report. This, of course, will give you the status of your site. Now, we can't cover every possible warning and error you may see here, but if there are any errors, which will appear in red, you'll usually need to correct those before you begin using the site. If they're warnings, which are in yellow, that means you can use the site, but it's recommended you correct whatever the warning is saying is currently misconfigured. One error that, as of the current release of Drupal 8, you'll almost always see here, if you scroll down, is the trusted host settings error. Now, you can continue using the site if you see this error, but it's recommended that you take care of this for security reasons. I'll walk you through how to do this because it's not intuitive, though it isn't difficult either. We're going to need to go back to our file system. So click on File Manager in your cPanel environment. We're going to go to Web Root. Let's navigate into the Sites directory. And first, we need to give ourselves permissions to edit this default folder. So we're going to select the default folder here within Sites. Click Permissions and give the user, which is us, write permissions. Let's change that. Now we're going to go into this default folder. We're going to do the same thing for settings. Click this, manage the permissions, because we need to edit this temporarily. So we're going to give write permissions to the user. Click change permissions. Now we're going to edit this settings file. So click edit and just click edit again. And here you need to find the section on trusted host settings. The easiest way to do that is to do a control F search for the word trusted. And you'll see trusted host configuration. Down just a little bit from here, you'll see some example code. We're going to copy everything in between this at code line and at end code. So these three lines, we'll copy those. Then we're going to go to the very bottom of our file where we see dollar sign databases and settings and maybe a couple of other things. We're going to add a new line to the end of this, paste that code that we just copied. And we need to delete these first three characters of each line, spaces. I'm counting those as characters here, so we're going to delete the space, the asterisk, and the space. And do that here as well. Space, asterisk, space, and then get rid of the first space, asterisk, and space. So that the code begins with dollar sign settings. It has this example here, and it ends with close parentheses, semicolon, with no asterisks preceding it. Now we need to replace the example domain with our own. So we're going to put, for me, this will be OS training. This will be whatever your domain is. And if you're using a different top level domain, something besides .com, replace that with whatever you are using. Then we're going to add one more line. Immediately after this and before the closing parentheses and semicolon, it's going to be almost identical, but we're going to leave out the www dot. So here on this next line, we'll do single quote, caret symbol, then go straight into your domain, backslash dot, finish it off. Don't forget the dollar sign at the very end. That's important. Single quotation mark and go ahead and put a comma here, even though it's the last item. Once that's done, you'll save your changes. And now you can go back to your site and back on your status report page, you can go ahead and refresh this page. And now we see trusted host settings enabled. We don't see the red background here. So that tells us everything is good. We're not going to worry about this opcode caching warning. This is kind of a server specific thing and it's not crucial to the running of your site. Once we've done all that, there's one last thing we want to go back and take care of. Let's go back to our file manager. Settings.php, we need to make this not writable again. So we're going to go to permissions, remove 
the write permission from user. So no one should have write permissions now. Change permissions, then go back up one level and we're gonna do the same thing to our default folder, restore it to what it was. Permissions, we're going to remove write permissions, which apparently Drupal has actually already done for us in this case. And now we've taken care of all of the errors, we've installed our site, and we're ready to begin using our freshly installed Drupal 8 website.